It has been an ongoing debate ever since the next-gen cars were revealed. Horsepower. The drivers want more horsepower because they feel it would make the NASCAR races better, especially on the short tracks and road courses. Unfortunately for the drivers, NASCAR dropped a bombshell on them stating that it's not needed and that last weekend's race was a good sign for the sport. So, NASCAR itself doesn't want to add more power. But why? It would cost more than it would bring in, according to John Probst, Chief Racing Development Officer for NASCAR. The governing body isn't sure that it would make racing better. If you add the horsepower, you add the cost, then you see if it is better, Probst said. There's no guarantee you get there, and it would be any better. And I think there's some evidence that shows as we add horsepower, they run further apart. Probst predicted that adding horsepower would cost millions, but not necessarily eight figures, because engine makers would have to improve parts that are already there to handle the extra horsepower. Probst thought that because of the higher airflow, engine makers would then make new airboxes. Because of the extra power, the throttle connections and ECU calibrations would need to be done all over again. There would be more work to be done on the exhaust system if the engine had more horsepower. NASCAR worked for the first year to get rid of the next-gen cars too much heat, so research would need to be done on what to do with the extra heat. The gears would change. NASCAR also couldn't use more horsepower on the biggest two-mile tracks, so there would probably have to be three engine sets instead of two. Doug Yates, who runs Roush Yates Engines, said last year that he thinks it would be very cheap to go to 750 horsepower, which is what NASCAR had before the next-gen car came out in 2022. That's because the engine being used now is the same one that made 750 horsepower. To control the horsepower, NASCAR uses a thick plate with holes in it to slow down the flow of air through the engine. Could we go back to 900? That would be a pretty long runway to get there and probably add a lot of expenses due to just that the life of the engine will be short. But NASCAR seems to be opposed to it. And on Sunday, the NASCAR Cup race at Bristol stood out for a number of good reasons and one surprising one. It was a nice break from the pointless discussion about whether adding horsepower is the answer to all of racing's problems. The most frustrating thing about Sunday's event, which was mostly tire talk, was figuring out who to thank for it. To this day, no one seems to know the exact reason why it happened. The same cars used the same set of tires at Bristol last fall, without any trouble. But this spring, they chose not to put any rubber on the same track surface at all. Instead, after about 50 laps, most of the tires had corded off and were left with bits of rubber marbles. With nine sets of new tires to start a 500-lap race, that was both a problem and a chance, as it turned out. Between laps, NASCAR and Goodyear were able to give each cup team an extra set of tires, which most teams were able to use until the end of the race. In the middle of the race, there was no talk of aero push, track position, or drivers wanting more horsepower. Instead, there was a lot of energy, nervousness, and doubt. It was just racing the way it should be. People have always been interested in it, but it has been overwhelmed by other changes in the sport over the years, such as changes to the cars, the races, and the way the series winner is chosen. The teams were thrown a huge surprise, but they rose to the task and changed as best they could. In the process, drivers had to do something that many of them hadn't done in years, and some hadn't even thought about. They had to carefully save tires instead of just waiting to put on the next set when they needed to stop for gas. What an interesting idea, right? No, not really. It was a part of NASCAR for a long time, but it's slowly going away. Tires that last at least one fuel run are now the standard, not the exception. The most amazing thing about this big gain in racing is that it wasn't caused by more horsepower, which has been the rallying cry of fans and drivers for a long time who want to go back to the good old days. In fact, you would probably end up in the wall with a flat tire if you used all the horsepower you had on Sunday. 
Stock cars today are not the same as they were 10 or 20 years ago, let alone two or three. The version tomorrow will be even more different. Things change, sports do too. But what happened on Sunday showed that NASCAR still has the power to fix some of the biggest problems in racing right now, and its teams didn't even have to add anything to their cars. Of course, it might not be possible to repeat what we saw at Bristol on a daily basis. Goodyear might not like that at all. But it is worth a shot. This will at least change a topic that is getting old. Greg Stucker from Goodyear said that the company brought a tire to the Bristol Motor Speedway tire test last season that was meant to wear out faster at the request of NASCAR and the race teams. The tire that was used on Sunday worked just as it was supposed to last fall. The tire wore down slowly on the concrete track, and there were not many problems with tire wear during a fuel run. Something was very different this time, and Stucker thinks that the fact that plastic was used in the corners instead of PJ1 like last season could be what went wrong. Now, we're trying to understand what's different. Why is the racetrack behaving differently than it did a year ago? It's the same package, it's the same tire combination, Stucker said. Obviously, the difference is the resin was placed on the lower groove instead of the PJ1. Yet, I still think the racetrack should be taking rubber as it did last fall. It took rubber immediately during that race. Still a little bit of an unknown on why it isn't behaving the same way. Stucker thinks that something needs to be changed because he saw too much tire wear on Sunday. Tire wear is always the goal. That's what people want to see, Stucker said. It creates comers and goers, and who manages the tires the best. Like I said, I thought we were in a good spot last fall. And obviously something is different now. This is too drastic. For the people in the Goodyear racing truck, the beginning of the race looked like a Southwest Airlines ad. But by the end of the day, the racing on Sunday was amazing. There were 54 lead changes in the Food City 500, which is a record for Bristol Motor Speedway. It was very exciting to watch the drivers balance working hard for position and keeping their tires in good shape for the long run. Even though the amount of tire wear wasn't exactly what Goodyear wanted, it made the race more interesting by giving us something to keep an eye on. The race never felt like someone already had it. When the NASCAR Cup Series teams go to Bristol Motor Speedway for the night race in the fall, we'll see how the tires are wearing. But it looks like NASCAR and Goodyear may have found the magic bullet to fix the tired short track racing product that has been a problem for the NASCAR Cup Series since the next gen car came out in 2022. What are your thoughts? Did you like the race or would you love to see more horsepower in the Cup Series? Comment your thoughts down below and subscribe for more NASCAR news.